had I followed the keto diet at an earlier age, maybe I could have prevented this tumor. I don't know. But the chances are that, that maybe the tumor wouldn't have been there without the, with the keto diet. When Roger's doctors told him his brain tumor could lead to a coma, he felt helpless. They couldn't tell him where his tumor had come from, and apart from surgery, there was little he could do. Roger looked into the ketogenic diet and took his health into his own hands. Little did he know that this tumor would become an unexpected gift to his mother, his in-laws, and many co-workers. I'm Dr. Boz, and Roger is another one of our heroes on the Dr. Boz channel. I got uh, into the keto diet because I was uh, diagnosed with a tumor in my, uh, in my head, unfortunately. And this was discovered at the end of uh, 2016, in December. And uh, from that point on, I kind of looked at ways how to uh, influence the growth of this tumor. I was told that it would, um, it obviously, in the end, I would, I would get into a coma. When you get this kind of news, you're, you're looking towards what can I do myself, some kind of empowerment. Um, and I, I didn't get it from the doctors. So I started looking at, uh, at tumors and I start, just started searching the internet. And then I came across the keto diet. And I especially came across the information from Dr. Seyfried, mm -hmm. who was obviously involved in, in, in many research, uh, how the keto diet helped his cancer uh, patients and how to uh, prevent growth. I noticed that at least uh, I shed weight. <laughs> so <laughs> for cosmetic purposes, my wife was very happy with it. So, um, but I, as I said, I look for the medical uh, effect to the keto diet. Dr. Thomas Seafried is paving the way and really helping physicians like me and many other practitioners give that hope to our patients to, to at least help the, the uh, other forms of medical treatment. But also in, in all of our hearts and minds, we can see the link that says, if we could all not live with such high insulin or such high glucose, maybe we could prevent cancer as well. And both the, the conversations of uh, augmenting the cancer treatments and even preventing cancer, it becomes edgy, at least in the American medical culture. Uh, in, your, in your medical team, how was that received by your physicians when you started talking about using keto to impact the growth of your tumor? Well, they said, well, go ahead. It will not make a difference. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> well, the majority of doctors uh, don't really believe in the keto diet. So that makes it really difficult. There are some doctors and there are some researchers here as well uh, at the Leiden uh, University that are looking into the keto diet and how it might prevent tumors or might help to uh, manage tumors or maybe make them smaller even. Um, but it's, it's really, you know, starting to, to say the least. Innovators like Dr. Ken Berry, like myself, need to stand still and just keep doing this in a, in a methodical way because the ripple effect of these successes are where the legacies come from. Insulin is a very important factor for the growth of tumors. Yes, it, feeds, it feeds all these tumors. And so what really surprised me that um, a lot of these doctors, after they've operated on someone, they give them sugar uh, uh, with, with vitamins and minerals uh, to make it easy. So that really, that really struck me as something that is not right. Roger is spot on. The chronic elevated state of insulin makes it easier for cancer cells to grow. Insulin is a growth factor that stimulates a wonderful environment for cancer cells. Let's take a look at these slides. We're gonna talk about the sugar, energy, oxygen, ketones, and those gnarly free radicals, otherwise known as reactive oxygen species. When we compare cancer cells to the healthy cells, cancer cells love glucose. In fact, it's their primary fuel in most cancers. Healthy cells like glucose, but they have other options for their energy source. The energy efficiency of a cancer cell is wasteful. They're not efficient as compared to the healthy cells, which are very efficient with their use and delegation of energy. Oxygen is something that cells need to live, but cancer cells don't do as well in a highly oxygenated state. The cancer you'd like to think doesn't like oxygen, whereas healthy cells use oxygen to respirate. Cancer cells do not like ketones, whereas healthy cells prefer ketones. And finally, 
The reactive oxygen species are known for being very damaging to cells. Those free radicals are electrons, really out of their sphere and damaging the insides and outsides of cells. They promote cancer. Free radicals also damage healthy cells, but our healthy cells are able to decide when a cell is beyond repair and gets rid of it. What does the keto diet do to those cancer cells versus the healthy cells? Well, the ketogenic diet lowers glucose, making it more difficult for cancer cells to find the proper amounts of fuel. When it comes to efficiency, in a ketogenic state, the body becomes more efficient at how it fuels the body. This makes it difficult for the cancer cells. Obviously, in a ketogenic diet, <laughs> ketones are around, and cancer cells don't have an efficient way to use ketones for energy, unlike healthy cells, which can adapt quite rapidly to using ketones even if they haven't been using them recently. And finally, we talk about free radicals. The ketogenic diet is known for decreasing those reactive oxygen species and lesser of those free radicals are found in a ketogenic state. All in all, when looking at fighting cancer cells, we know that a ketogenic state does a great job for strengthening healthy cells and making it more difficult for the cancer cell. On September 29th, 2020, Roger went through an 11 hour brain surgery. They removed his tumor, which was strongly attached to his cerebellum and brain stem. Thankfully, surgery went well. The tumor is gone, which is wonderful, but I still see the advantage of following the keto diet because you don't want any new tumors to grow. Right. So in the past, I didn't know about the keto diet. Had I followed the keto diet at an earlier age, maybe I could have prevented this tumor, I don't know. Have you uh, struggled to stay consistent in your keto journey? Yes and no. That, of course, it sounds <laughs> like a real easy no. answer. <laughs> but at the beginning, I didn't have any support team. So I really did it all by myself. I made many mistakes. I learned a lot. Um, I read a lot. And because of that, people, they did see uh, the influence that the keto diet had on me. So I noticed that and, and that is probably also one of the things that I learned. You must kind of look in, into your body, measure the chemistry. You know, I take a blood of drop and then I measure it. Uh, and it helps me a lot to stay on track. So I would advise people, make sure you check everything. Make sure you check your ketone levels. Make sure you're doing the right thing and make the adjustments that you need to make if you don't get the progress that you are expecting. Because obviously something is wrong. As you said, it's a, it's a chemical thing. It's a chemistry in your body. Yes. which does not lie to you. <laughs> so you must adjust it to get the results that you desire. I spoke with a lot of colleagues that were really interested. And so I became um, somewhat of an example, at least in this part, to them. There was quite a bit of success around me. Um, but because of this success, people look towards me. And if I fail to follow the keto diet, you, you understand <laughs> this yeah. is not very good for them. They look they look as, towards me as an example. So I kind of stick to the diet, but I also, as I said, I have a lot of profit from the diet. But there were a few people that started the keto diet. My mother was one of them. She is 79 years old. She uh, also lost quite a bit of weight um, and she feels wonderful. She has more energy than ever before. I also had some colleagues that were really interested and they also started following the diet and they had at least the, they didn't have any tumors, so there was no medical reason for them to follow the diet, um, but they had success with it. They felt better and they lost weight. And of course, one of the most important people, I think that also followed the keto diet was my father-in-law. He's yeah. a type one diabetic, which makes it really interesting because the literature of course warns you about the keto diet and about the difficulty you will have to balance your glucose and, and et cetera in your blood. But um, he said, no, he said, I'm using a lot of insulin. I'm gaining weight. I know it's not good for me. He said, tell me about this diet. I said, you must be careful. You must check your, mm -hmm. your numbers really well. Uh, and then you can follow the diet, but please be careful and please measure everything, which he did. And he was very successful. And now he's using half of his insulin that he used to use. His wife was diagnosed with a pre-diabetic type two. Um, she also had extra weight. She also followed the diet and she didn't have to use any pills anymore. I've been in medicine almost 25 years now, written thousands of prescriptions. It's my goal to use the ketogenic chemistry to reverse that many prescriptions in the next 25 years. And I can be so lucky if I accomplish that goal. 
but it is that baseline chemistry set within your system that gives people the power to not only feel better, have that cosmetic look of a wardrobe that lays on their body better, but a chemistry set inside that enhances the way their brain thinks, functions, the way their immune system responds. And when I look to the colleagues out there that have <laughs> kind of stepped over the threshold and they're the ones like me standing outside the crowd, one of the biggest motivators they have for doing the ketogenic diet is the prevention of the problems that they have spent, you know, thousands of hours taking care of and saying, I just don't want that life. You cannot avoid that I have given advice to patients on how much insulin to use, how much carbohydrates to eat, how often to eat. And then 15 years later, I didn't make them better. They were, they were on more medications, they were heavier, they had a higher risk of death until I did this. And as much as it seems like a panacea, like it's gonna fix everything, it sure fixes a lot of things and they seem to be related to inflammation and high states of insulin. One of my other goals is to inspire people to not only live the ketogenic life knowing they can check their chemistry and really kind of control uh, or at least be able to see what their body's doing and then to inspire people around them to change. And I think that's the only way mankind actually makes change is they have an example and then they have a pocket around them. And then those people become examples and then they have pockets around them. And that ripple effect is really where I see a story like yours making a huge difference for your, your family and their family and their family. Thank you for letting me tell the, tell the story with my experience with keto. Um, and I hope it can, can be of a small influence uh, of people that are still wondering if they should follow the diet or not. Um, yeah. To them, I would say, give it, a, give it a try and do it long enough for you at least to give your body the chance for it to reap the benefits of the keto diet, because there are a lot of benefits and give, your, give yourself that opportunity. Amen. Oh, that's a perfect message. If you want to learn more about keto and cancer, click here. I'll see you there.